So this is going to be a video of the homework problems assigned on page 487, the second set of problems assigned on page 487. Uh, this is problems 20 through 22 and 28 through 34 evens. at six problems assigned to you and I'm going to do three of those. Uh, I'm going to do problem number 22, problem number 30, and problem number 34. So I'm going to start with 22. You have this fraction underneath the root. And you can't have any fractions underneath the root, so we have to break them up. Quotient, the, the, the quotient property of radicals allows us to do this. It allows us to break this down into two separate roots, one in the, the numerator, one in the denominator. Once I do this, I see that I have a lot of perfect squares here. 100 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, and x squared is technically a perfect square too. So I can write it all like this. 10 squared in the numerator, and denominator is going to be, sorry, 2 squared and x squared. And just like before, with the product property, you can cancel out anything to the power of 2 with its square root. Cancelled. Cancelled. So nothing left underneath the root, which is perfect. So in the end, you end up with 10 in the numerator. And in the denominator, it's a 2x. Now if you left it like this, you would be fine. But you can simplify this further. 10 divided by 2 is a 5. So that would be the simplest form. Done. Oh, I'm sorry. That would be a 5 over x. Sorry, not a 5x. The x stays in the denominator. My bad. So that's 22. Pretty simple again, mostly because everything was a perfect square. They all just canceled their root out. Let's take a look at number 30. We have root of 4 over 52. So we have a fraction underneath the square root. Again, we don't like that. So we're going to break it up into root 4 over root of 52. In the numerator, it's a perfect square. Nice and neat. It's a 2 squared. In the denominator, this is not a perfect square. So now we've got to think about this. What can we break a 52 down into? Well, you can do 2 and 26, but either the 2 or the 26 are perfect squares. You can also do 4 and 13. That's a better breakup because the 4 is a perfect square. So up here, this 2 canceled its square root, so it's now 3. So it's just a 2. Below, you get 2 squared times 13. Again, the 2 to the second power can cancel its root out and go outside. The 13 can't. It's got to stay. So you end up with this. 2 over 2 to 13. Sorry, 2 over 2 root 13. Now you're not finished here, unfortunately, because you have a square root in the denominator. And if you remember, we can't have that. First things first, let's simplify these, the 2 in the numerator and the 2 in the denominator. They simplify to 1, so you're left with 1 over root 13. Now you got to get rid of that root in the denominator. And I showed you how to do that. You're going to multiply this by a fraction and compose entirely of the root that you're trying to get rid of. So it's entirely composed of this. So it's going to be root 13 over root 13. Same thing in the numerator and the denominator, which in total ends up as a 1. So you're essentially multiplying this fraction by 1, which doesn't change anything. But it allows us to do this. Once you cross multiply, you're going to get 1 times the root 13, so we're just going to write down root 13. On the bottom, you're going to get this. 
and of course that means now I have a power of 2 in the denominator which can also very conveniently cancel out that square root that's your answer so now we got rid of the root in the denominator yes we now have a root in the numerator but we're fine with roots in the numerator so that is number 30 and I'm also going to do number 34 sorry about the outside noise we have square root of 8 divided by 3 n to the third power just like before break up the fraction because we don't like fractions underneath the root into two separate square roots one in the denominator one in the numerator so taking a look at the numerator we have an 8 which is not a perfect square but it's made of 4 and 2 which then of course break down into that's 2 squared in the denominator we have 3n to the third power 3 I really can't do anything with but I can work with the n to the third power I can break it down into an n squared times an n to the first so that's going to be root 3 times root n squared times just an n all right next let's do some cancellations right off the bat power of 2 and a square root these these go same thing here let's see what I'm left with I'm left with a 2 I'm left with a root 2 I'm left with uh, an n, then a root 3, then another root n. So if I were to rewrite this, I'm left with 2 root 2 on the numerator and n with root 3n in the denominator. Unfortunately, I'm not finished yet because I have a root in the denominator and I can't have that. i got to fix it. Just like before, I'm going to multiply, to fix this, I'm going to multiply this by a, another fraction composed entirely of that pesky root in the denominator. So it's going to be a fraction composed of 3n in the numerator and 3n in the denominator. By itself, it's just the 1, so I'm not really changing the fraction because I'm multiplying it technically by just the 1. Now I'm going to multiply it across and see what I get. In the numerator, I'm not going to get anything new, but I wasn't really trying to fix the numerator. So we'll accept whatever we get there. In the denominator, we're going to get this. 3 squared n squared, because 3 times 3, that's 3 squared n times n, that's n squared. So now I can cancel out powers of 2, their square root, they're free to go. In the numerator, I'm going to get the 2, which is still on the outside, then 2 times 3, that's 6, so root 6n. In the denominator, I'm going to get n times 3 times n, because these are now free. If I were to fully simplify this, I would get 3n squared. So that is my full answer to problem number 34. Alright, thank you very much for watching.